Nice launch track and countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good evening. You are looking at a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket awaiting liftoff at 12 a.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Welcome to our live launch coverage of the Astronis One to Many mission. My name is Zomi Srivastava, and I'm a structures engineer here at SpaceX, joining you from Hawthorne, California. Today, we are launching four satellites to a geosynchronous transfer orbit on behalf of our customer, Astronis. Astronis is calling this mission One to Many because this launch will grow their fleet of geostationary satellites from one to five. One of the satellites launching today is Astronis's UtilitySat, the world's first geosatellite capable of performing multiple operational communications missions. The first customer for UtilitySat will be APCO in Mexico, and the satellite will serve a variety of customers for shorter duration missions throughout its life on orbit. The other three satellites are split across three of Astronis' customers, with two satellites, NuView Alpha and NuView Bravo, supporting Anuvu, a connectivity provider for planes and ships. And the fourth satellite, Aguila, will be the first ever communications satellite dedicated to the people of the Philippines. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 129th mission of 2024 in what has proved to be quite a busy year. But it's not over yet. We still have several more launches planned before we ring in the new year. Be sure to follow at SpaceX on X for up to the minute launch updates. At LC40, both the vehicle and range are green and we're on track for an on-time launch. Weather is looking great with only a 5% chance of weather violation. While the countdown continues, let's take a moment to meet the vehicle taking our payload to orbit today. 
Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket developed and manufactured by SpaceX, known for its safe, reliable, and cost-effective access to space. It's also the first and currently the only orbital-class rocket that is capable of reflight. Starting at the top of the vehicle is the payload fairing, a protective shell that encases the payload being sent to space. Made up of two halves, the fairing will separate and jettison away from the vehicle once Falcon 9 reaches space. Today's fairing halves will be flying for their 22nd and 12th times and will be recovered by our recovery vessel, Bob, after launch. And here's a photo of the Ashana satellites being encapsulated in that fairing just a few days ago. Continuing down the vehicle, we have the second stage. The second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. Below that is the first stage, which contains eight engines arranged around one center engine held in place by a structure called the OctaWeb. Each of these nine Merlin 1D engines delivers about 190,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, which gives Falcon 9 a combined 1.7 million, pound of, million pounds of thrust. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs that deploy just before landing to allow for vertical touchdown on a drone ship or a landing pad. The booster supporting today's mission is flying for its 17th time. It previously supported NASA's Crew-5 mission, two NASA cargo resupply missions, CRS-28 and NG-20, as well as missions for InMarsat, Intelsat, the US Space Force, and Optus. The same booster has also launched nine Starlink missions. After stage separation, it'll head back to Earth, this time targeting a landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, as the countdown continues, let's take a moment to hear from our customer for today's mission, Astronis. Our first satellite was the first of its kind. Small, low cost, high orbit. From higher orbits, you only need one satellite. You don't need hundreds, you don't need thousands, you just need one. But for us, putting up one was just the beginning. We are Astronus. Our first product, the MicroGeo, connects the unconnected. The satellites we build are points of national pride. And each one of them connects millions of people to affordable, low-cost internet. But our mission doesn't stop with comms. And it doesn't stop with Geo. We're working with Space Force to bring resiliency to the GPS satellite system. We're also working to connect and protect astronauts on the moon. And maybe someday we'll even build a habitat that they'll call home. We're the only company building this today. Why? Because space is hard and high orbits are harder. The radiation environment fries normal hardware in days or even hours. And medium class rockets can't even get you all the way there. We had to invent an entirely new class of spacecraft. It took us years, but after countless radiation tests and revisions, we made it happen. That's why we're ramping up production right here in America. We've built five satellites, sold 12, and plan to launch over 100 satellites by 2030. That's more than the rest of the industry combined. We are Astronus. We invented low-cost, high-orbit satellites. We're building the future. And we're just getting started. Falcon 9's primary objective today is to launch four Astronus satellites to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO. After liftoff, about a minute into flight, the rocket will hit max Q, or maximum dynamic pressure, where the vehicle is continuing to gain speed as it passes through the thick lower atmosphere. After about two and a half minutes, Falcon 9 will arrive at its second major flight milestone, main engine cutoff, or MECO. And then immediately following MECO, the first and second stages separate. Following stage separation, the MVAC engine will light during second engine start, or SES-1, on stage two to continue carrying the satellites to their intended orbit. A little less than a minute later, the payload, the payload fairing will separate, exposing the Astronus satellites to space for the first time. Meanwhile, the first stage will perform an entry burn as it re-enters the atmosphere, slowing down to reduce heat and stress on the vehicle. About one minute after the first stage entry burn ends, the second stage will shut down its MBAC engine, known as Second Engine Cutoff 1, or SECO 1. After that, the second stage will coast for about 18 minutes before reigniting its MBAC engine to finalize the orbit for payload deployment. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for strongback retract. 
Coming up shortly, the transporter erector, also known as the strong back or TE, as you just heard over the nets, will retract away from Falcon. The TE is the large truss structure you see there standing right next to the rocket. First, we'll see the clamp arms opening around the second stage, and then the TE will slowly pull away from the rocket. And so all of that will be coming up in about 15 well, seconds from now. Strong back lower has started. The strong back is designed to transport, raise, and support Falcon 9 at the launch pad using umbilicals or flexible lines to route the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. You can see those clamp arms have begun to open. Clamp arms are fully open, and we should see the strong back beginning to pull away from the rocket shortly. Now, at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of rocket-grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first stage and second stage should finish propellant loading about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at around the T-minus three minute mark, and the second stage finishing at around the T-minus two minute mark. Stage one, locks load is complete. Good call out there. The first, do the first stage is fully loaded with locks. Now at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will enter startup, and that means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. Then just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the nine M1D first stage engines for liftoff. Weather is still looking green and with a really clear night, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 12 a.m. Eastern time. So with that, we are proceeding into the last few minutes of terminal count with LOX load on the second stage coming up in just a few seconds. Stage two, locks load is complete. Great call out there. Ground gas closeouts. That white cloud you see is venting, is us venting the TE LOX line, which is completely expected. Falcon 9 is in startup. There you just heard that call out for F9 startup, which means the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. LD, go for launch. Great news, the launch director has given the final go for launch. So at T minus 39 seconds, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9. T minus 30 seconds.
So we just heard a call out for an abort and we are standing by to get more updates from the team. Prior to this point, the launch was going smoothly. The team saw no issues as we loaded propellants, all system tests and checkouts looked good, and everything was go for an on-time launch. At this time, it's too early to speculate on a potential root cause, and I'm hearing from our teams we likely won't have more insight in the next few minutes. So at this point, we are going to end the webcast and allow our teams to focus on troubleshooting. It'll take some time to figure out exactly what happened, but keep an eye on our website and our social accounts, and we'll share information as it becomes available. Thanks for tuning in, and, uh, and as always, we appreciate your interest in SpaceX and your ongoing support.